solo. My colleague Sophie Caesar couldn't join us today, so let's hope I get this right. Uh, joining us today is Northwest Copper. Northwest Copper is a new diversified copper gold explorer and developer with an exciting pipeline of projects in British Columbia. With a robust portfolio in a tier one jurisdiction, Northwest Copper is well positioned to participate fully in a strengthening global copper market. They trade on the TSX venture under the symbol NWST and are currently trading around 76 cents. They just announced that drilling has started on their Kawanka Stardust project in central British Columbia. The Kawanka pro, uh, program is expected to include a total of 7,200 meters of drilling uh, for this year. Here to tell us more is the president and CEO, Peter Bell. Peter, thanks for joining us today. And whenever you're ready, go ahead. And I'll definitely have some questions for you at the end. Thank you. Okay, that's right. Um, <clears throat> thanks very much, Paul, and happy to be here. Um, uh, I assume I can share my screen here. Sorry. I... And go through this presentation. So I'm, I'm happy to, to be here to present Northwest Copper. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to slide number five and um, give a bit of background on the company and a, and a little bit about myself, and then we'll proceed through uh, with our plans for the year. So um, Northwest Copper was formed uh, in early March. It was formed by the merger of two predecessor companies, um, Sun Metals <clears throat> and Serengeti Resources, and both were active in this region of British Columbia. Um, Sun Metals uh, had a flagship project called Stardust, uh, which is part of our portfolio. Stardust, this is the Stardust camp in the foreground in this slide, and this is the core shack of, of Stardust. Stardust is a very unique, high-grade, uh, underground mineable uh, project. It's about almost 8 million tons of total uh, resource inventory at about 2% copper equivalent. Um, and Stardust sits immediately adjacent to what was the flagship project of Serengeti Resources, and that's called uh, Quanica. Um, the Quanica deposit sits out here in the valley, immediately adjacent. The two deposits are about seven kilometers apart. <clears throat> And by putting them together, um, we actually achieve um, scale, uh, which is important. So we have a, a project that is, has material scale. Um, we have grade. We have grade at Stardust, exceptionally uh, high grade, particularly for this part of British Columbia. But also there's a high grade part of, uh, of the Kunika deposit, um, which is near the surface and will be the focus of, of what we will study and also drill. Um, you um, mentioned our drilling has just started there um, last weekend, so we're um, we're underway there in, in that program. Um, the other thing, just to point out on this in this project, is uh, that this is in the north central part of British Columbia. Um, this it is an area with good infrastructure, so you can drive to this project. You can work here year round, um, and um, so it it doesn't have great infrastructure challenges, and it is easy to to access. As I said, it's about sixty to seventy k from power. Um, so we have power nearby, and we even have rail about 200 kilometers away. So we're in a great jurisdiction. We have a high-grade project that gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of what size and what scale of project we build. Um, we are in uh, a place with, with great infrastructure, and we're backed by a great group, which is the, the Oxygen Capital Group. Um, Mark O'Day, um, who's had many successes, is, is our uh, chair executive chair, and, and I'll get to the some of the track record of, of Oxygen in a sec. Um, so uh, as I said, new companies started uh, trading in uh, early March on the back of the merger, and we're, we're advancing this uh, exciting, uh, pretty low risk project in BC. Uh, we also have uh, an exploration pipeline. I'll just get to that in the next slide. Um, so including the, the de-risking of, of Kunika and Stardust and our high grade project there, we also have a, a pipeline of projects, including a potential brand new copper gold dis porphyry discovery at a project called East Niv, which is just south of Kames. And then we have the opportunity to add some new resource uh, that um, of copper gold uh, at nearby Lorraine, which I'll show on a, on a subsequent map as well. Um, so just on the management team, a little bit about myself. Um, I, as I said, I joined in early March. Um, I'm a geologist by education and, and background. I worked about 16 years as an exploration and, and mining and then corporate geologist, about 13 of those with Newmont Mining. Um, I spent a long time working in Nevada as well as Canada. 
um, and worked also in Peru for four years. I was the chief geologist at the Yanacocha mine in Peru. Um, and then a couple of years working for Newmont, mostly traveling around the world, looking at projects that Newmont um, was considering acquiring. Um, from there, I went to uh, London, to the UK. Uh, I spent 10 years working uh, for a couple of hedge funds there, mostly for a fund called Polygon, um, first as an analyst, and then I ended up co-managing uh, a long, short um, mining-focused hedge fund there uh, until 2018, and then I uh, wanted to return to Canada. I came back in uh, early 2018 and, and worked for three years in mining investment banking for National Bank Financial, helping companies um, raise capital, um, uh, finance their projects, and, uh, and advising on uh, M&A and other um, strategic moves. So a um, uh, pretty broad background and really um, uh, a bit of a specialty in, in taking projects into production from an um, investment and, uh, and industry point of view, and, and hence the, the attraction to this opportunity. That's to Philip Chuck, we've just added, we just announced her appointment this morning. Um, she has a, a long history of working in the region on the first name uh, basis with a lot of the, the leaders in, in the region on the First Nations side. Um, and a long background with, with tech and really valuable uh, resource for us. Jim Lang is a very practical uh, PhD geologist who spent the last 30 years looking at uh, porphyry deposits in BC. Um, and Jim um, really uh, will help us unlock value from all of the, the assets that we have. Uh, Lauren McDougall uh, was the CFO of, of Sun Metals, one of the predecessors. Uh, and Ian Neal was involved in the, the exploration drilling that highlighted the 421 zone, the deep part of Stardust that really makes Stardust what is right now and the key component to our, to our two projects. Um, Marco Day is the executive chair. Uh, Dave Moore is the former CEO of um, Serengeti. Uh, the other board members are a mix uh, from the two predecessor companies. Um, Eric Strom is an important guy. He's a uh, block cave mining engineer from Newcrest. Um, Chris Hobrick, uh, Chris Lee, and Phil uh, are part of the broader oxygen group um, and mostly work for Pure Gold, but they're, Chris Lee in particular is available to us to help us um, with resource modeling. <clears throat> and Glenn and Bill have a long history with the Lorraine project, which is part of our portfolio. So just a, a plug on oxygen, and this is, I think, really important because what we're trying to, what we're saying about this company is we have a copper project we can build and finance ourselves, which we believe differentiates us from a lot of other copper pre-production stories. And part of that is the scale of the project and the high grade. And the other part is the backing of oxygen and Mark. And, um, you know, they, they've done this before. So since 2016, three of the world's new gold mines have come from that group. Uh, Long Canyon, which was in Frontier, um, sold to Newmont. Karma, which was in True Gold, was uh, built, financed, and put in production, then sold to Endeavor. And now Pure Gold, uh, most recently in Red Lake, um, financed and built in the last few years and, and now in production. So a great part of the world. I mentioned the jurisdiction. Um, there's been a lot of activity in the region recently, um, uh, safe, reliable, jurisdiction with a, with a lot of copper or gold deposits. Um, we sit right here between Mount Milligan and Kames, both those belong to Sentara. Um, the Stardust Quinica flagship project is right here. Lorraine a little bit to the north. And um, the East Niv project is not shown here, but it's just slightly south of Kames. And again, a, a, a really hot part of the world from an exploration point of view, um, particularly in, in light of uh, the interest in copper uh, from investors. Um, I mentioned uh, Vesta, who, who we just hired. Uh, we are in good shape on uh, our relations with First Nations. Um, there's a long history from the Sun Metal side and the Serengeti side of building those relations and working with people in the community. Um, we have exploration agreements for our main projects for um, moving them forward with the First Nations groups. Um, and it's something we continue to put a lot of emphasis on and, and bringing Vesta in is, is, is just another step in, in prioritizing that and, and making sure that um, we build partnerships in this region. On the infrastructure, uh, here's uh, the Mount Milligan mine of Sentara and the uh, Kamas former mine and advanced project of Sentara. So we sit in between those two. Um, Kunika Stardust right here, here's the access road into it. 
you can actually drive between Lorraine and, and uh, Quinica Stardust, not on a public road, but on logging roads. So there's a connection there from an infrastructure point of view. And finally, East Niv sits close to infrastructure, but East Niv requires its uh, helicopter support right now. It's an earlier stage project that, that sits off of, uh, off of the existing road. <clears throat> on our programs for this year, uh, the Quinica Stardust project, the drilling is entirely at Quinica. Uh, it's uh, tightening up the spacing on, uh, on the high-grade part of the resource, expanding the high-grade part of the resource, and then stepping out to the south uh, to uh, see if we can um, test some of the regional targets that were uh, brought forward by, um, by Serengeti resources but not uh, tested. Uh, at East Niv, we have a potential brand new discovery. Um, we'll drill there an initial program of 2,700 meters starting in July and probably running until October. I mentioned that that's helicopter support, so we have a slightly shorter uh, window of, of uh, operation there. And then finally, the rain. We're really taking advantage of a bunch of money spent by others in the past, particularly tech, uh, in trying to um, unlock the value in a region that has a bunch of uh, uh, resources. There's a lot of uh, high-grade copper gold porphyry mineralization in here, and we just need to put it together and figure out if there's a subset of it that we could include in our Quinica Stardust project. We'll um, spend some uh, money and time on the ground there and, and work to advance and try and incorporate that into the overall plan um, over the next year or so. So just to be clear on the Quinica Stardust project, you have Stardust is, is unique geologically. It's a, it's a carbonate replacement deposit. Quinica is, is more typical BC porphyry copper gold deposit, but with a, a very uh, discrete and near surface high grade zone, which, which is important. Despite the, the differences in, in how they were formed, the mineralogy is quite similar and the metallurgy appears very similar. And our plan is to have one plant um, mine the two deposits more or less simultaneously and feed one central plant with material from the two deposits. Um, because we have high grade, we can have pretty material production, um, you know, New Aftonish, uh, Copper Mountain kind of scale, um, but with relatively small capex um, because of that high grade. Um, and that high grade gives us another of a few other uh, advantages, not just in terms of how much money needs to be put into the ground to get it going, but also having a smaller footprint and permitting than a much larger project and um, you know, uh, potentially a, a shorter timeline to production. So we're really focused on having that balance of material production and, um, and, uh, and capital that we can manage from a financing point of view and also from a build point of view. So just start us, the, this is a, a, a long section um, cut through uh, the, the Stardust deposit. <clears throat> and what it really shows is where most of the tons and grade are. They're in this deep, deeper zone called 421 that was discovered by Sun Metals um, with an incredible hole, 100 meters of 5.3% copper equivalent drilled in 2018. Um, this deposit is still open at depth. There are still some other uh, targets that need a little bit more work and need a budget to be tested. Um, the, there's certainly still potential here, but for this year, we're just taking the resource that we've announced, which, um, by the way, came out about five weeks ago and exceeded our expectations on size. Uh, and we're taking that resource and we're bundling it up and packaging it and putting it into the, the combined PEA that we'll put out in the uh, early part of, of next year. So no exploration drilling budgeted for this project this year. Um, just a review of some of the results, um, you know, 100 meters of 5.3% copper equivalent, incredible hole, um, some pretty uh, impressive other holes, 31 meters of 10%, of all of these put out by uh, Sun Metals, and all of them really demonstrating uh, the continuity of the high grade and the thickness of the high grade. And there's a really coherent, steep plunging zone here that, again, is open at depth um, that really lends itself to underground mining, uh, long hole stoke type mining. Um, just some, some kind of important things to note about the Stardust resource. Uh, indicated 2 million tons of 2.6% copper equivalent, 5.8 
million tons of 1.9% in the inferred category. So one of the highest grade uh, copper deposits anywhere, but in, in BC, um, it's about five times higher than the average grade of BC copper mines. BC copper mines typically um, a high quality concentrate, a moderate grade, uh, you know, good power, great place to work from an infrastructure point of view. But, but not high grade. This one is exceptional, 2.6%. Really important part of that combined project. Um, and just to show the power of the drill bit, and this is why we, we do want to go back into Stardust at some point with the appropriate budget and understanding um, and drill here again, um, a doubling of the indicated tons and 200% increase in the inferred tons since the last resource. And that's really the power of the drilling that Sun Metals did at um, in the 421 zone. And then I don't want people to forget the scale. <clears throat> you know, we have the the two plus uh, plus five point eight million tons in the two categories at <clears throat> 124 million tons of measured and indicated resource at at uh, at Quinica. So lots of scale here, and these projects we're developing them as one. And and you know we have grade and scale. We've got we've got what we need to move this forward. On Quinica, um, we will be uh, drilling. We've already started drilling. We're drilling holes, angle holes across this higher grade zone. We're also trying to expand the higher grade zone to the south. And I mentioned also we're drilling um, regional targets. But the geometry of what we know and what we have at, at Quinica is important to understanding why this is such an attractive opportunity to us. Um, we have a high grade, uh, what in a porphyry deposits typically called a high grade core. It represents one phase of the intrusion in the intrusive history of, of the deposit. And that is a particular part of the monzonite. Um, and this monzonite hosts the highest grade portion. Now, because of the way that the, the geology here developed, we've actually ended up tilting this high grade zone uh, on its side. And we've eroded away the low grade that would have sat over top of it and replaced it by some later sediments. So what we have here is, especially here at surface, we have high grade mineralization um, very early in the mine life. It, it basically outcrops or subcrops here in this first phase pit. <clears throat> the result of that is that this project will have, um, by having cash flow earlier, higher cash flow earlier, it improves all, all the the economic uh, indicator. So having that highest grade closest to the surface is, is really helpful and important in terms of the value of Quinica to, uh, to the combined project setup. I mean, on the metallurgy, um, we did the first metallurgy for Stardust earlier this year. It came out in April, showed very, very high recoveries, um, really a reflection of the simplicity of the mineralization and the high grade that exists there and the lack of any kind of contaminant things you can see that Stardust and at Quinica, um, they have very low or very clean concentrates with low levels of contaminants, a really economic um, uh, copper grade, so very viable copper grade in both deposits. And both deposits produce similar flow sheets. So they, uh, they are, the plan is to combine them and uh, mine the two deposits all at once and put them into one common plant. So we only have to build one plant, we don't have to build two. Changing gears completely here for a second. Uh, this is the East Niv project. East Niv is a potential new discovery. Um, East Niv was worked up by Serengeti, um, led by Dave Moore, the former CEO. Um, Dave uh, staked the ground and he and his team collected these samples and examined the targets and did the geophysics. So looking at an early stage project like this, there are a few things that, that matter in terms of getting excited. Um, the one thing that we have here is we have evidence of ore grade mineralization here. So this is the kind of grade that would exist in some of those BC deposits I showed before, 0.35% copper, 0.3 grams per ton gold, over 19 samples here at outcrop number one. Um, similar types of grades at Maine showing east and the KC showing. So evidence of potentially economic mineralization here right at the surface with no drill holes. And then the second question is, well, we have, we have um, uh, interesting grades. Do we have any scale? And that's what we show in this slide here. So we have the east, we have red crest on the left just for scale. And on the right, we have 
the eSNV target. On eSNV, um, this is a geophysical signature, so we have uh, induced polarization chargeability shown in the background with the red dashed line showing kind of the outline of that, that anomalous zone. And then we have magnetics shown um, here in the hatched pattern. And really the, the, the relevance of that is it shows the area of, of, uh, of the system. So we know the induced polarization represents um, disseminated or, or spread out um, pyrite mineralization or sulfide mineralization in the rock. It really gives us a sense of the scale and that scale is similar to red crisp. So we know we've got a big system that's done a lot of, with a lot of alteration and a lot of potential. And then we also have the mineralization, the evidence of the mineralization in both rock chips and, and, um, and soils here shown in this uh, pattern here. So we're going to drill an initial 11 holes into this, um, uh, starting, as I said, in, in kind of early July through to the end of October. And, um, you know, we're going to test out, we'll start in the known, start on top of the outcropping mineralization and then spread out and, and try and figure out, you know, what's the scale and depth extent of, of all of this. And again, we could have a brand new, uh, previously unknown discovery um, in British Columbia, you know, within 50 or 60K of, uh, of the Comest deposit. <clears throat> Finally, Lorraine, again, uh, a different kind of opportunity. Um, Lorraine was uh, worked on for many years by tech, has not been worked on for about 12 years. Uh, there's a lot of high grade here. There's a lot of already discovered alkalic porphyry copper gold mineralization of really interesting grade. Our, what we need to do is take the work and the money that tech spent, put it all together and understand it better and try and come up with some subset of what they discovered and potentially some new stuff too and figure out if we can truck it down to the Konica Stardust deposit and incorporate it into a combined um, study there. So that's our exercise at, at, um, at Lorraine. Um, we may do a, a little bit of drilling this there this year, but it's primarily a, a, an exercise in, in working off uh, the money that other people have already spent. Um, one of the things that tech did was they outlined some resources um, uh, that were non-compliant, so tech didn't put them out into the market. Uh, with a little bit of investment on our part, we can convert those to compliant resources and actually include them in our, uh, in our public statements, and that will be, will be obviously helpful for us, so it's a good way to unlock some value cheaply. We'll be working on that um, uh, as part of this year's field program as well. Um, again, just some of the uh, past results, 100 meters of 1.4% of copper and 0.6 gold in this upper main. Lots of showings here, lots of mineralization. Um, really just need to take the time to understand it and, and pull it apart and figure out um, what uh, is the best uh, use of, of that very large, interesting perspective uh, land position. So in terms of what we're doing this year, um, uh, we've basically done so far uh, exactly what we said we were going to do, which is we closed the merger. Um, we did the first metallurgy at Stardust. We incorporated the 421 zone into the resource, which ended up um, being uh, bigger than we uh, had, had kind of telegraphed. So that worked out really well. We've just started drilling. Um, as noted uh, last weekend, a Lorraine program should start in the next week or two. Um, and the first drilling at East Nib will be again in July. <clears throat> the drilling that we're doing at Quinica, uh, improving our resolution and understanding there will result in a, a new published updated resource at Quinica before the end of the year. And, and then the resource from Quinica and the resource from Stardust will be combined into a preliminary economic assessment that will show what the two projects look like together. And that will be out in the early part of 2022. Um, in addition, we will uh, we are planning to have an updated resource for Lorraine. So again, taking that non-compliant resource and, and <clears throat> doing a little bit of work to, to make it something we can put out into the public domain. So, so that's kind of it on the on the what we're trying to do and how we're doing it. We have $18.5 million in cash, so we're well cashed up um, and should end the year. We'll, we'll try and spend a, a pretty good chunk of that on drilling and exploring. Um, we should end up um, still with cash in the bank, so we're not running out of money anytime soon. Peter, thanks for the presentation. Much appreciated. Uh, Welcome. A <clears throat> questions for you that I'm sure. going to uh, as far as the resource estimate is concerned, I mean, the goal yep. standard is if you got 5 million ounces or between 5 and 10 million, man, that's a resource. You've really got yep. something. What's the standard for copper? 
I mean, what do you think would be where you really get looked at? You have a resource resource equaling X amount. Yeah, I mean, it it it's a little more vague in copper because for for a number of reasons. One of which is that that copper tends to, these deposits are polymetallic, so you have copper and and gold together, and so you know, but um, you know, in our case, what we're really focused on is the annual production we can get out of this deposit. Um, with the capital that we're we're kind of contemplating, so we're aiming for spending sub five hundred million dollars on capital to build this project. That's our goal in terms of the study that we produce, and we're trying to come up with a project that produces the kind of copper equivalent production numbers of a New Afton or a Copper Mountain. So in the range of hundred million pounds copper equivalent per year over a ten or twelve year kind of period. What we'd like to do with with Lorraine is extend that mine life, but that that's the kind of um, uh, setup that we sort of see in front of us right now on a very high level, non fully engineered back of the envelope kind of sense. Which answers one of my next questions that, that came into me is: uh, you obviously are going to be a producer and not a, just a miner. Yeah, you're going to take this full tilt right to the end, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now uh, the 18 million that you have on ca the cash on hand. Yep. Uh, how far is that going to carry you with the drill programs that you have in place? And uh, we're doing? planning to spend in the ballpark of twelve million dollars this field season. Okay, so you still have some cash left over. Yep. In, in yep. or whatever. Uh, next question that came in: Do you have any debt outstanding or any royalties on the properties? No. None whatsoever. No. Uh, Here's a question that came in earlier. Why are your grades so high in general in this area? Like you said on a couple of your slides, you know, like they're much better than the norm for BC. Yeah. So first of all, the, this carbonate replacement deposit <clears throat> is a little bit unusual in BC. You know, we don't we don't have deposits like this. Um, the 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 deposit is controlled by structure and stratigraphy. So it's where you have the intersection of these high angle structures and limestone host rocks, so very reactive host rocks. It's a bit like a scarn in a way. So you have the opportunity to produce these very high grades in, a, in an environment that's much different from a porphyry environment. You know, it's just different geology um, allows, uh, allows for a different deposit type. So these are smaller, but higher grade. Okay. And then on Quinica though, it's a good question on Quinica. You know, I mentioned it in the, in the slide and it's, one of those things you know that I, I I can't talk about enough. There is a high grade part of Quinica, and and you know most porphyries have higher grade and lower grade portions to them, and Quinica is no exception. But here the difference is that the high grade portion is closer to the surface and earlier in a potential mine life. Gotcha. We have Terry Orslin with us today, and I'm just trying to find him on the list because he's got a couple of questions I want to ask live. I'm looking for you, Terry. Give me a second here. All right, I'll find him in a second and I can bring him on. One of the other questions we have, you touched on the indigenous issues that you have there. Yep. Um, I mean, that, you, that your working commitment that you have with people <clears throat> where everything is in place there, there's no problems? Yep, correct. Yeah, there, we have existing agreements and uh, we've, you know, the, the two predecessor companies, Dave Moore has been working there since, since 2004. He's the former uh, CEO of Serengeti. Um, and, uh, and Steve Robertson, who is the former CEO of Sun Metals, Steve had worked basically his whole career in BC and, and you know, both those guys had, had long-term relationships that we've built on and, uh, and we have all the agreements in place. Okay, excellent. Now, can you touch on the infrastructure that's in place on all your properties? I know there's, there's roads in there, but is there any physical infrastructure on any of your projects at any of the sites? Nope, just roads. Just roads? I mean, we have camps and, you know, that kind of stuff, but nothing permanent that's related to mining. Okay, I got you. Yeah, so these are new projects. I mean, it's an important point because, you know, in, in the copper business, there are lots of um, companies where you go back into an old area and, and try and get it restarted or whatever. But these are these are these are brand new on previously unmined projects. Okay. Excellent. Okay, it looks like we're going to get Terry on here. Terry, can you hear us? I can hear you now. You okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Terry, if you got some questions for Peter, go ahead, please. Thanks, Paul. Actually, I'm going to hire you as my associate pretty soon. You're doing well. My God. <laughs> Great questions. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi, fine. Thanks. Paul asked actually very good questions. I just want to come back to some, some of the um, sections. 
the section you showed with an open pit possibility that was that Quinana or was it was it Stardust? Sorry. That's that's Quinica. Quinica. Yeah. And how much tonnage is in there, by the way, in the uh, in the in the pit? Maybe. Yeah, I I can't remember off the top of my head, but but it the the and the reason that I don't memorize that number is because we're we're redoing this completely. How much of it goes in the open pit and how much goes in the underground? will be informed by the new resource that we're gonna have by the end of the year and, and our own plan of trying to manage that capital and keep it keep it the right to the right number. And also, you know, we to some extent would love to minimize our footprint of the project as well. So in terms of optimizing what's in the open pit and what's in the underground, that that is not gonna be the same as what was in that conceptual pit that I show in the section. I just show it for reference to show that the high grade is in the early part of the mine life. Okay, but there will be enough open bit to to write some checks for the for the underground development. Exactly. Yeah, and and it's you know you get you get um you know unlike you know copper deposits are are normally not at least porphyries um you know typically don't have really robust short term economics. So that this one's a bit different that way just by the geometry of the high grade. Yeah. How much more work do you think you have on the stardust just to delineate on that long section that you showed in terms of uh, uh, on, on the strike and probably the other directions as well. I, I cannot tell. I haven't seen many other sections. How yep. much work so it's a good question. Um, the the um, so the high grade at Stardust is controlled by basically some some steep dipping structural zones, fault zones, where they intersect a particular package of the limestone. So part of the stratigraphy and so where we've outlined that so far. Um, you know, is where we get that really high grade, where you get the best part of the limestone with the, with the good part of the structure. There are other zones that look like that that we haven't tested yet, but you know, those are deepish kinds of holes. We don't have to, um, you know, in, in, or, in terms of discovering anything new, we don't have to do any more there. We, there will be a little bit of infill to do at Stardust. Um, you know, some of it is an inferred and we'll need to convert that to indicated to go to a feasibility study. So um, there will be some drilling there. And in the future, we want to explore it and see if we can expand it. But just in terms of putting it into the PEA and, and getting a, a, you know, a, a feel of what this project looks like and what the cash flows could look like and all that kind of thing, we really don't need to do any more work this year. And we, don't ha we haven't budgeted any more work this year. And just finally, on the, on the Lorraine, how yep. much, uh, how, that was, there was a tech property. I, I, actually, I didn't even know that. So they walked away from that, I guess, because of the grades or tonnage or whatever. So that that's probably the reason. And how much proper work did they do that whereby you can say that they spent so much money it was worth all your time? Um, I, I, I don't have off the top of my head the, the amount of money they are off the uh, at hand, what the amount of money they spent. They've not worked in there since 2012, um, but there's a lot of work that's been done there. A lot of drilling, a lot of groundwork, a lot of um, particularly heavy on the drilling. Um, I think, you know, from Texan, you know, obviously wasn't at tech and haven't even talked to the people who were. Um, but, you know, I, th I think that if you if you think about it from tech's point of view, if tech is, first of all, tech is big, so they want a big project. If they come into an area like this, they need to build a big standalone project that's important enough to tech to move forward and advance and put into production. Um, so, you know, a few hundred million tons of very good grade um, is is something that that tech has so far we don't we don't think that there's 500 million tons of of you know great grade material there we don't need that what we're looking for if we could find 60 million tons of really good grade porphyry copper gold mineralization we could take it down to Quinica Stardust and make great money out of that so we just have different objectives than than tech did yeah and the near acquisition from uh, Serengeti so uh, that's that, that that's a standalone the way you're looking at it, right? Not not part of the package. Yep, exactly. It's a good. It's it's also a good question, and it's a uh, one of those things that um, you know, as they say, a nice problem to have. So if we make a discovery there, it's too far away from from Quinica Stardust to incorporate into a plan. You know, if it's a standard kind of porphyry deposit, it would have to stand alone. So it either, you know, then at that point we as a company have to decide what we want to do with that. Do we want to advance two projects in parallel? Do we want to do a deal with someone else? Do we, you know, there are lots of options, but you know, that would be a great problem for us to have to figure out. So hopefully we get there. 
Thanks, Terry. Much appreciated as always. Uh, just two quick questions, Peter, and then we're going to wrap yep. it up. Okay. First of all, do a copper company, so have a copper mug. That's how I work here. Nice. Uh, <laughs> how much past uh, past data do you have to work with? And has that been incorporated into your 43101s or your resource estimates? Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a, there's a lot of uh, so um, Serengeti did a lot of work on Quinicas, so there's there's a lot of work. Um, that we're we're using there a lot of high quality work of of all kinds, not just drilling, but also you know the work that they had a PEA as a standalone on Quinica too. That's not the project we're going to build, but it's it's there's a lot of helpful data there, geotech, metallurgy, and so on. At Lorraine, um, it's more exploration data, so there's a lot of exploration data there that we can use. And in fact, at Lorraine, we want to put out a compliant resource at Lorraine, and we won't have to do any drilling to do it. Tech's already done the drilling. We just gotcha. need to do the QAQC and so on That's to make that happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. East Niv, no work's been done there, so we don't have anything to work with. Exactly. Uh, now, drill results or labs have been backed up all across the world, basically. Uh, how are they in BC where you where you can be? Uh, so we're 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 kind of guiding. I don't guiding might be a bit strong, but um, uh, telling people that we're expecting around six week turnaround in uh, BC this year. Um, so. Uh, Hopefully we can do better than that. But you know, the challenge last year uh, in BC was, was really um, COVID in the sense that um, you know, you can have you don't you're not allowed to have the same number of people working in lab um, as you did before. So you had increased activity and decreased productivity from the lab. So increased exploration activity going into you know less capacity. So that was the problem. Um, our understanding from speaking to the labs is that they've improved their ability to deal with that. This year, so we'll see. So it is a problem worldwide, um, and you know, BC uh, the labs have made some improvements and adjustments. Um, so you know, our fingers crossed it won't be too slow. But um, that's what we're projecting for right now. Perfect. And the one last question that just came in a second ago: Are you fully permitted for what you're planning to do in the short term for the next? Six uh, we're fully permitted for ex for the exploration we want to do. Yeah. Perfect. That answers that. Peter, thanks very much for your time. Thanks everyone for uh, logging in today and listening. Thanks for the questions. Uh, we'll be following Peter's company, Northwest, for the next four or five months or whatever. Great story. Great presentation. Thanks very much, Peter. Much appreciated. Thanks for the chance to tell the story. You're welcome. Take care. Uh, yeah. Bye-bye.